Okay, so a couple of days ago we went through class notes on the depreciation function and we went to Desmos and learned a lot about that exponential function and today is the other half of that which is the car loan function which you'll see is not exponential later but we will do these notes through a screencast. Yes, we will. So the formula for your car loan is going to come from a few different things. We're going to start with the price of the car, so the purchase price. We've got to add the tax and the interest. Because that's all paid pretty much on top of the price of the car. So that actually brings up the amount of your loan to higher than the value of the car. And then, of course, if you make a down payment, that would be subtracted. So you owe a little bit less. That's why down payments are so important, because it kind of offsets the tax and the interest and then some beyond that. Exactly. So we're going to use 8% for tax, because that's what it is in the area where we live. Um, that's going to vary on location, depending on location. And some states actually don't even have sales tax. Um, so we change our percent to a decimal, so 8% becomes 0 0.08. Now for interest. Interest is kind of a formula we made up. We, we assume 6% interest, which is kind of in the middle of a used car loan that would uh, be typical for a bank to give you. We just kind of stick it here in the formula. It's not 100% accurate, but it adds 6% back to the price of the card to give us an idea of uh, the true amount that we owe at the end. Yes, it ends up being a pretty good estimate. And then, of course, you may make a down payment. You may not. And a down payment is the amount of money paid at the point of sale to decrease the amount that you borrow. Banks used to force you to make a down payment because you were a lower risk because you would owe less on the loan. But now if you watch commercials for cars, they always say no money down, zero out of pocket. But we recommend that you do make a down payment and you'll see why as we go forward. All right. So here is where our function, our equation for um, your car loan comes from. We take the price of the car multiply that by 1.08. Doing that automatically adds on your 8% tax onto the price of your car. Without having to add it back. Then you multiply 1.06 by that because, again, that's going to add the interest on automatically. And then you simply have to subtract your down payment. Okay, so that's what we have here is the loan amount. So that's how much you borrow. What we want to do is come up with a function that shows how much you owe at any given point in time. So it's going to take into account how many payments you've made. So it's worth going back and talking about the fact that um, time is in years, so we need to convert our monthly payment to a yearly payment. So in order to do that, you just take your monthly payment and divide it by and multiply it by 12. So that brings us to our loan payoff function. What we do is we take the, uh, the loan amount oh. I'm something here. <clears throat> we take the loan amount which comes from your price of your car times 1.08 for tax times 1.06 for interest, subtract any down payment, and that again is the loan amount, but then we're also going to subtract the monthly payment times 12, and then multiply that by x. Again, just like we did with our depreciation function, we're keeping x and y in our function. Those are our variables. x is the time in years which determines the y value, how much you owe on your loan. All right, so this looks like a very long, crazy formula, y equals and all this stuff here. But once we convert all these to numbers, it really looks a little bit more normal, especially when we go to type it back into Desmos. You'll remember from the other day when we looked at the depreciation function, it was more of a curve that came down like this and never hit the x-axis because it never reaches zero. But a payoff does reach zero. You do at some point actually pay off your car and you owe nothing. So this is more of a straight line linear equation.
and there's no exponents in it, which is why it's linear. So last time we wrote this function is exponential, but today we write this function is linear. So we have one exponential function from the other day, a linear function from today, and next week we'll put them both together. Okay, so we're going to walk through an example today um, now where we give you some parameters about the car and your down payment and monthly payment. And you're going to, we're going to show you how to um, substitute the information into your function so that you can come up with your equation. Then we'll have you go to Desmos to graph the function and remind you of how you will change your window, graph your function, and how you will find your y values for the given x values in the column um, to the left where we're not naming the years. So our example we're giving you is a car that costs $27,821. We're telling you that you are putting in a down payment of $3,000 and you're making monthly payments of $400. Those three pieces of information are all you need to write your function because two things are always going to stay the same, the 1.08 and the 1.06. You're also always going to have your 12 in front of your X multiplying by your monthly payment. So you substitute your car price in here. Yikes. Substitute your car price in here. You substitute your down payment here. And you substitute your monthly payment here. And your function is y equals your car price times 1.08 times 1.06 minus your down payment minus your monthly payment times 12 times x. You can simplify this in a few pieces if you want and come up with this equation. We do recommend, though, and you can see we've highlighted in gray what we simplified. We did the multiplication and subtraction of 3,000, and we multiplied the 400 by 12. Now, I think, and Mr. Fields also thinks, that when you're typing this equation into Desmos, it might be smart to write out the entire long equation so that if you need to change or want to change one of the parameters, you easily can. Like, if you wanted to see what your what it would look like if you made a larger down payment or a larger monthly payment. How would that affect your loan payoff? So we do suggest you type into Desmos the big long equation. So why don't you go over to www.desmos.com right now and we'll type this function in together. So you're at www.desmos.com like we have been and the first y equals function is going to be exactly what we had on our, on our notes just a few seconds ago. The $27,821 for the price of the car times the tax of 1.08, the estimated interest of 1.06, minus a $3,000 down payment, minus a $400 monthly payment made 12 times per year. So by now you've probably realized that you don't see the graph the way you want to. A kind of a vertical looking line shows up here, but it's cl clearly not the way you want it. So we go over to our wrench and we change the window. The x-axis is always time. So we can start with zero because you can't go back in time. Zero is now and we can go 10 to 15 years in the future. 10 is probably plenty. The y-axis is money, the value of the car. So we start with zero because it will nev never be worth less than zero. And the car's original price was 27, almost 28,000. So we suggest you go slightly higher than that so it stays on the graph. So I'm going to go up to 35,000 just to leave some room there. And notice this one is linear. It is a straight line. The, uh, the, the money you owed, the beginning of the loan is right here. You pay it off over time with a steady slope until the car is finally paid off right here. So on your actual paper notes, there was that table under example one that had the years listed zero through six, maybe down to eight. And we're gonna type in the loan amounts for each one of those years. Desmos has a feature, as you know, that allows you to see the table. You click the settings wheel, the gear, and then the little convert to table icon. And it defaults to negative 2 to 2, as you know. I like to get rid of the negative 2. 
you don't have to as long as you want to ignore it later. And then add 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, maybe down to 8. But you'll notice that 7 and 8 are negative numbers, which really don't mean anything. Because once you've paid off the car, these negative numbers don't mean anything. Desmos doesn't know that we're talking about a car loan that ends at 0. So once you get past here, you don't need to fill in the numbers any further. So right now you're going to type these numbers, round it off to money, 48 cents, 48 cents, and ignore that last thousandth column into the notes on paper. All right. I went down to the next function down here, the second one, and I want you to type in y equals zero. That basically means when will the money be zero? When will you owe no money? And you can see it showed up in purple here. Where does purple meet red? Right here. So at 6.01 years, you owe no money. So if anyone ever asks you, how long will it take to pay off your car completely? The answer to this particular question would be 6.01 years. Okay, so we pop back to the notes to make sure that um, we got our values right. I apologize, Mr. Field said to round to the nearest cent, and I've got mine rounded to the nearest dollar here. Um, I'm okay with that. We'll accept either for today. Um, so what we'd like you to do is go ahead and practice writing your equation given a car price, a down payment amount, and a monthly payment amount. Graph it on Desmos and record the loan amount for years 0 through 6, just like we did here. We're not going to ask you to graph it on the axes given. We just want to make sure you can get the loan amount um, from Desmos. So. Here is our practice example for you. We're looking at a car price of $22,500 with a down payment of $2,000 and a monthly payment of $300. So what you should be doing right now is writing your equation, typing it into Desmos and graphing it similarly to how you just did it, and copying your loan amount for years 0 through 6 on the table to the left. And remember, the tax is always 1.08, the interest is always 1.06, so use the last problem as a model and just change these numbers right here to fill out this table. We will continue and practice this on Monday together.